Thank you, Your Excellencies. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great pleasure it is to be here at this uh, major shipping conference. It's personally a great pleasure to be back in Oslo, uh, having spent many, many years coming here as a banker with a Nordic, a wonderful Nordic bank. Um, maritime services are at the heart of our economies, both Norway and UK and many others, of course. They are our raison d'etre. And uh, there's one 19th century British politician, John Burns, described the River Thames as liquid history and the river as the gateway to the seas. And the services that grew up on its shores have played a pivotal role uh, in London's development as a world city and, of course, as a center of global trade. And the maritime services it offers and that it provides are a core component of London's competitive offer now and in the future. And I've been asked to say just a few words about what London has. Because as, as Mr. Moroka said earlier, shipping is a servant of trade. And what London has to offer maritime services are very much a servant of shipping. The UK sector is founded on at least 300 years of international experience and a unique breadth and depth in services. London is a global maritime hub and no other market on earth can match its range and scale of financial and capital markets activities. It is where businesses come to raise capital, to manage risk and to buy world-class products and services. From marine insurance to shipbroking to all connected legal and financial services, London is a one-stop shop for international shipping. The Baltic Exchange for Market Intelligence and Risk Management, Lloyds of London for Insurance, the Admiralty and Commercial Courts, and of course, the International Maritime Organization, and so many other international organizations there, inspiring the highest degree of trust. The Lloyds Register classification is the second largest ship classification society in the world after the NK. It may be taken over soon, we don't know. And it has a unique perspective on world fleet development, technology, and regulation. And it represents the highest standards in the maritime industry. Together, they all form a great cluster of services supporting and supported by the world's maritime industry. London also has a great tradition, as many of you know, of welcoming people from around the world to complete seagoing training and maritime business courses in UK's universities such as the city's own Cass Business School, which offers a first-class education in shipping finance. As someone who has worked in shipping finance myself, I know firsthand the importance and the interconnectedness of the UK's maritime sector. It also brings nearly $50 billion a year to the UK economy, some 600,000 jobs, nearly one in every 50 UK jobs, and some 96% of all UK imports and exports transported by sea, being an island. The shipping market has, of course, become more and more globalized and, to an extent, migrated eastwards in response to the emergence of Asia as a trade and economic focus. But as we have heard this morning, it is important for all of us, for London and other European maritime centers, to continue to respond by providing ever better service for international ship owners and operators. We will do this collaboratively. And events such as today's conference will help us all work together to secure a vibrant future for all our shipping industries. And that lies at the heart of the wider offer to global business and to the maritime services sector. The ability to adapt and to innovate. The insurance market, for instance, responded rapidly to the problem of piracy, developing specialist kidnap and ransom cover for ship owners and charters. And London led development of the freight derivatives market because of the adjacent shipping and financial markets. The market has been extended to tankers and containers, and the city is now pioneering development of our electronic trading of freight derivatives. So if a Kuwaiti-owned tanker carrying oil from the Gulf to Korea collided in the South China Sea with a Greek-owned bulk carrier bearing Australian grain to India, where does the UK come into the equation? And the answer, as with so many areas of world trade, is everywhere. We provide insurance cover for the hulls and cargoes, for injuries to the crews, for the possibility of environmental damage. Contentions of liability and costs may be resolved by arbitration and dispute re resolution involving English law 
and British lawyers, and maritime experts. London's firms specializing in shipping law and the intricacies of, of shipping finance manage 70% of the world's maritime arbitrations. So if litigation is required, the case can be heard in our superb new commercial court, the world's largest specialist center for dispute resolution. And very possibly, the trade is being financed through London as well. This position, I think, is underpinned by a reputation for transparency and reliability in global maritime business and of partnership, not least with our many Norwegian friends. Commercial for London over. We welcome the opportunity to forge a strong and enduring collaboration with our Norwegian counterparts. And I hope you will all visit the UK Pavilion in Hall C before you leave, and then come to London for International Shipping Week in September. You will be very welcome. So congratulations on this excellent conference. Congratulations once again to the award winners. And thank you very much.